The Synology B Station is Synology's attempt to mix their best applications with ease of use. It's a four terabyte hard drive that you can access anywhere in the world, and it's one of the easiest devices that I've personally ever set up. It allows you to copy or sync your photos and documents using a mobile application, computer, or even web browser. Want to access or sync your Google Drive, OneDrive, or Dropbox files from your B Station? Set it up in B files. Want to ensure the B Station is backed up? Use an external hard drive or Synology C2 and automatic backups will occur. There's a lot to unpack here, but it generally revolves around functionality rather than setup process, which is a nice change compared to a lot of other devices that exist. To set up the device, sign in with a Synology account. Yes, a Synology account is needed. Type in the serial number. It'll ask you to hold down the power button for a few seconds, but after you do that, Synology B Station is fully set up. It'll be accessible through your Synology account and a web browser or through one of the mobile applications. Notice I said web browser or mobile application. By default, local access on the B Station is not enabled. You can enable it by accessing the system settings advanced settings, and enable local access as well as SMB if you'd like. All right, so let's dive into the B station. So when you set up your B station, this is going to be the landing page that you get to. The first thing we're gonna do is look at these system settings. So similar to the local access that we just looked at a little earlier, there are some other options here. In the user section, this is where you can actually add all of the users. Unfortunately, there's a cap on eight people that can use it, but for a four terabyte hard drive, Truthfully, that should be enough. In the backup and restore section, this is where you're gonna back up and or restore your data. We will take a look at that a little later. And in the update settings here, you can choose to keep your B station up to date, which will automatically install its updates. The only other thing to take note of here is the local access tab that we looked at earlier. Now, the big thing you're gonna use is B files and B photos. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is B files. Now, B files is, if you've ever used it, basically Synology Drive, but it's used slightly different. So in the My Files section, you're gonna have all of your files that are uploaded to your B station. This is where all the data will exist. This Computers tab is going to be where any of your sync jobs, which are configured with the actual B Files desktop application, we'll take a look at in a little bit, but this is where all of the computers that have sync tasks will be. Cloud Services, this is where all of your cloud services that you're connected to will live. So any of the files that exist on Google Drive, OneDrive or Dropbox that you have configured on your B station will be in this section here. USB backup. You can actually back up your B station to an external USB drive if you'd like, or you have to use Synology C2. That's it, those are your only two options. In your external drive section, this is just gonna be the external drives you have connected. I have a B drive connected to it right now, and funny enough, it picked it up right away, it knew it was a B drive, and you can see everything that existed on that now exists through B files. Everything else is just gonna be really ways that you can browse through your data. Now, one other thing you can do is actually share. So you can share files inside of here, and what you will see is that you can copy a link to this, allow link protection if you'd like, but you can share this with users outside of your local network and they will be able to access all of the data. Now that's B files. B photos will allow you to upload photos directly through a web browser, or you can use their mobile application. If you've ever used Synology Photos, it's basically the exact same thing. You can automatically upload your new photos from your mobile device to B Photos directly, and it has people and subject recognition, which will allow you to search through the data. Now, similar to Synology Photos, you do have some recognition issues. So for example, I uploaded just some basic thumbnails that I created, and what you can see is that this is probably the easiest person recognition that the application can have and it didn't do particularly well. So obviously this is all me. It thinks that I'm a bunch of different people and you can go in and merge all of this so that you have you know, one person. But the problem is that with a lot of people, you're gonna see right away that the person recognition is not great. This is across the board. This is how Synology Photos is as well. It's not horrible. It's good that it exists. It's just that you're gonna have to clean up your data periodically to make sure that the people folders are recognizing people correctly. So the final thing we're gonna take a look at is this backup and restore. And this is inside of the system settings, but you can choose to back up the entire device to Synology C2 cloud storage or to an external drive. 
When you select your external drive, you'll be able to set up a schedule. You can even encrypt the backup if you'd like, and you can choose when it actually backs up. As soon as you do that, it will back up to your external drive, or you can ignore all of this and just use Synology C2, and then it will back up directly to the cloud. So that's a really quick overview of Synology B Station and all the tools available inside of it. But what are my personal thoughts? So after using it for a while, I'm gonna go through some pros and cons. Now the device is extremely easy to set up. You can get this thing set up in under one or two minutes. And it's a mix of Synology's best applications. So Hyper Backup, Synology Cloud Sync, Synology Drive, and Synology Photos are four of Synology's best applications. I have a video on what I consider to be their seven best applications. That's four out of seven of them. So it's easy to set up and you're getting four of their arguably best applications that they have in their NAS line. It's a relatively affordable device and it's mindless remote access. So Synology Quick Connect is used everywhere here. You could see in all the URLs whenever you're accessing it, the Quick Connect URL, it basically uses Quick Connect for remote access and local access as well, but it uses Quick Connect and you're basically seamlessly able to access the device no matter where you are. Now let's look at some downsides. The biggest downside that I've found is that because it's limited to one hard drive, you will run into performance issues. No matter what you're doing, you will see at times periodically, it'll pop up and say the system is busy. And that's just because it's one hard drive and it's a hard drive, it's not an SSD. So you're really limited by the performance of that one hard drive. The next thing is the B Station desktop application. Now everything you can do with B files can be configured in their B station for desktop application. You basically have a B files link here and then you can go in and actually set up sync tasks. So I'm currently syncing my B station to my Windows desktop here and everything that I have on the B station is accessible through the actual file explorer in Windows and it can all be modified and configured through the B station desktop application. Now the application itself is not a con. The con comes in the sense that the B station desktop application utilizes Quick Connect. So you could be sitting directly next to the B station, have a local connection to it, which will be significantly faster and it will still utilize Quick Connect. And for that reason, downloading any of the larger files that you have is going to be painfully slow. When using Quick Connect in Synology DSM, it is smart enough to know when you're local and when you're remote. Now, it doesn't appear like the B station has that capability. So when you're downloading a larger file, it's gonna take a while because you're actually going to external servers to get that file, even though it's sitting directly next to you. It's going through the internet back to your device. So for that reason, you basically have to set up SMB and local access and you have to make sure you're not using the B Station desktop application to access your files because it's gonna be painfully slow. So from that perspective, you're actually better off mapping a network drive, which I just did here, because then that ensures you're actually accessing those files through the local connection as opposed to the cloud. Now, the downside of this is that you're not actually getting any of the functionality that comes with B Station. So you're accessing the files directly, but you're not actually able to download the file locally. You would have to move it to a separate folder. It gets messy. It just shouldn't work this way. If you're local and you have local access configured, it should access the B station locally as opposed to through Quick Connect because it is significantly faster, which then leads us to our next point that Synology limits you to Synology C2 for cloud backups of the B station as opposed to allowing you to use other services like Backblaze B2, which is what is very popular for hyper backup in Synology DSM. I imagine that it's because the setup process then would be a lot more confusing. And from that perspective, I appreciate that they basically pre-configured Synology C2, but it limits you and it's something that I'd like to see opened up. Finally, there is no redundancy. So it'd be nice if they allowed you to purchase a two bay device. So at least you have four terabytes and they're mirrored in the event that you lose a hard drive, at least you have some redundancy there. Now redundancy is not a backup, so you should still configure a backup as well but it would be nice to have that additional layer of security that redundancy offers. Other than those cons, I actually really do like the B Station and I like that it's allowing users who aren't that comfortable with Synology DSM to access some of Synology's best applications using something like the B Station with very minimal user interaction set up and you'll have all of that functionality in one device. If you wanna purchase the B Station, links will be in the description. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.